Hi, welcome back to your new lesson. In this lesson, we are going to discuss about the data flow and the register sets into ARM microcontroller. ARM processors, like all RISC processors, uses a load store architecture. This means it has two instruction types for transferring data in and out of the processor. Load instruction copy data from memory to register into the core and conversely the store instruction set copy data from registers to the memory. There are no data processing instructions that directly manipulate data into the memory. Thus data processing is carried out slowly into the registers. So let's first draw the block diagram of the data flow model into our microcontroller. So there is a first register banks. And uh, we can say it as a register files. And this register files contain register set from R0 to R15. So that means total 16 general purpose registers. And then there are two data bus here. So the first one is the A and another one is B. B passes through the barrel shifter and then through this A and the B it goes to the ALU Okay. And apart from this ALU, there is MAC unit. The MAC unit is known as a multiply and accumulate unit. So this unit gets this value, uh, which we can say the A. It also gets B and it also gets a previous carry uh, accumulation okay the previous accumulation and once this is done then the output from the ALU and as well as if there is another output at the MAC then it directly goes back to the register file which is known as a write back So this is known as a write back. Here it comes from the A and it comes from the V. And once the LU produces the result, then if it is data, uh, if the uh, result is decoded as an address of register, then it produces address register. So here are two things which you might have noticed that if the data, if, if the result from produced from the ALU is data, then it will be right back to the register and if decoded result from the ALU is address, then it will write the address register. And once address register has been written and then to access the next instruction, then it will simply increment it. Okay. And from the address register, it will directly go into the memory decosion. And apart from this address register, then there is another register that is known as a PC. Sorry, let's delete it. And this is a PC, which is a R15. We will register this, we will uh, discuss this register file in detail after some time. 
so this is PC that's the program counter so the microcontroller addressing machine which is a program counter PC gets a new address from its current execution to this address and then while addressing to this register file there is instruction decoder so once the instruction is fetched from the memory the instruction will be decoded okay and once it is decoded then it will be fed into the LU for further processing and here there is another unit that is known as sign extend okay and then here is also write back so this sign extend works when the register's data is only 8 bit and 16 bit why because each of these registers are 32 bit long and the sign extend convert those 8 and the 16 bit into 32 bit signed number so once again if we recap this whole data flow register model of our microcontroller we can say the data items are placed into these register files which is also known as a storage bank made up of 32 bit registers since ARM core is a 32 bit processor most instructions treat the registers as a holding sign or unsigned 32 bit values and the sign extended hardware converters this converted 8 and 16 bit numbers to 32 bit values as they are read from the memory and placed into the registers and ARM instruction set typically has a two source registers which is known as RN and RD sorry RD is just which is known as RN and RM and these registers RN and RM will be filled using buses A bus and the B bus and the data of B bus which is a RM resistor passed through the barrel shifter barrel shifter is being used into ARM processor to perform some logical operation before feeding the resistors into the ALU such as a logical OR and, and the XOR and the shifting left and the right of the resistors after passing through the functional unit the results will be stored into the RD re register which we can say it is written back or write back into register file so this is all about the data flow registers into the ARM and now we are going to discuss about the register so there are 32 registers uh, there are actually um, 18 registers which is uh, typically visible to the processor at a time into our microcontroller and those register sets are R0, R1, R2 till we have here R13, R14 and R15 and let's say here we have R12 so from register set R0 to R12 is known as orthogonal register set this means any instruction which applies to R0 that instruction will simultaneously 
I mean in the same way it will apply to all other resistors till R12. That's mean if instruction is being applied to the R0 in the same way it can be applied to the R1, R2 till R12. But it cannot be applied, it might not be applied in the same way to R13, R14 and the R15. And these three resistor set known as a special function resistor. In the same way and um, at the same time this R13 also known as SP resistor set that's the stack pointer and R14 known as link resistor that is LR and R15 is known as a PC that is a program counter. Now there is another fundamental which we need to discuss here. The ARM processor does not only have these uh, 16 general purpose resistors. We can say this is GPR. That's the general purpose resistor. And there are plus two more resistor set that is known as CPSR, current program status resistor and SPSR that is saved program status register. So the total becomes it becomes 18 registers which is visible to the user into usual mode. So here you might have noticed that I have specifically discussed user mode. So what is a mode? What is a mode? So we can discuss the mode as ARM processor ARM processor have a seven type of mode and one of that mode is user mode. So for every mode user might see a different set of a register. So that's why this is known as a bank of registers or we can say register bank and for every mode, for in these seven mode, for every mode, user might or the programmer might see a different set of registers for every mode. So we can say, for let's say the mode one, mode two, for these two mode, there could be reset one and reset two. But one thing is here uh, you need to notice that the register naming will be the same from R0 to R15 and here also it will be same R0 to R15. But when our microcontroller changes mode for let's say from mode 1 to the mode 2 then it saved these registers status and the processor status registers into the stack pointer and the processor status into saved program status register and it retrieves a previous status into a current program status register from the stack. So this is all about in this tutorial we have discussed about the register set and the data flow into our microcontroller. In the next tutorial we will see current program status register and saved program status register into more details. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do not forget to subscribe this channel so that you can get updates directly into your